This video is sponsored by JLC 3DP. 3D printing starts at just 30 cents and new users can get up to $60 in coupons. And now to celebrate JLC 3DP's third anniversary, new users will also get free 3D prototyping. Check the link in the description for all the information. Welcome to Figure Feedback, my name is Jeremy and out here on the table today, I've got an assortment of resin 3D printed miniatures but I did not print any of these. These were printed from JLC 3DP. Now, JLC 3DP specializes in 3D printing, resin 3D printing, FDM 3D printing, all different types of stuff. And they have been helping out the channel for a good while. And they are also sponsoring this video, but I needed to come up with an idea, something that I thought could be useful to you guys when it comes to resin 3D printing. Because if you wanna get the best quality miniatures right now, resin is going to be the way to go. But I know that a lot of people just don't either have access to a resin 3D printer or you don't have the space for it, an appropriate space to do it safely. Or maybe you do have the space, but you just don't want to deal with the hassle of resin 3D printing. You know, because it's hazardous, you got to deal with chemicals, ventilation, PPE, maybe you got kids or pets running around, you're like, I just don't want to deal with all that. So I wanted to see realistically, would it be a good idea if you really want to get these miniatures to send them over to JLC 3DP so that they can print them for you and would it be cost effective for your needs? So that's what I am going to be sharing in this video here. So as you can see here, all these miniatures were printed with a white resin. And the reason why I went with that is because this particular type of resin was the cheapest that they had on offer that allowed you to still pick which resin you use. The next cheapest option is something they call X resin, which is like a blind box. You can't pick what kind of resin that you're going to get. And then you also lose out on the benefit of having them uh, do some sanding for you, or you can even have them apply like a, a colored spray painted finish if you want. But I wanted to keep things a little bit more controlled. And also I wanted to get that benefit of having the sanding. So that's why I went with this one. But if you do go with the X resin, it does make sense things cheaper for you. All right, so looking at these models here, you know, they, unsurprisingly, they came out looking pretty good. Um, I've had some 3D printed things from them before and I have not been disappointed yet, but uh, these bases, especially at the bottom, they are super, super smooth, very nice. I don't see any like support marks at all on the bottom of this base. I guess that's the benefit of having them sand it for you, but yeah. I know that the details on the white might be a little bit hard to pick up on camera, so I'm gonna do my best to really show you up close how nice these models actually came out. And I intentionally left this troll guy um, unassembled so I can see how well these two parts fit together. So, you know, simple. Let's put it together like this and <laughs> it's a perfect fit. It is a perfect fit. You know, there's like, hardly any like lines or gappage in there at all. He's a perfect fit and he goes down on this white base right here. I'll get him glued down. But I also want to do a little bit of a comparison for some of these models that they did compared to what I managed to do myself. So for example, let's say we got this guy right here. It's like this dwarf with this big old ax and I had them print the exact same model you know, in this white color here. And I was taking a good look at them and yeah, they both look really, really good. But when I really started to look at some of the finer details, like the underside of it, I looked and I saw that their surface finish, like in between the legs and on the bottom of the feet, uh, this is actually cleaner than what I was able to do. Now this was printed on the, on the uh, Hay Gears Ultracraft Reflex RS. And just before I started tweaking the support settings to make the supports a little bit easier to remove, because as I said in my review of this particular printer, it can leave some support marks or divots here and there, and a little bit of cleanup work is required. So I'm trying to like minimize that but it was before I um, actually printed this guy so the bottom of this white one actually came out looking cleaner than this and uh, hey that's pretty good so but then here's another model that I printed after tweaking the support settings on the Ultracraft Reflex RS and this is the model that they printed up but I put her on the base this one doesn't have a base and then looking at these two models again 
looking on the underside and everything, I've gotten a lot closer to, uh, to uh, them being as close as physically possible. There's very little difference in between these two particular models. One thing that I do see that kind of stands out a little bit is just on the bottom of her um, I don't know what you call this or her skirt. Maybe this one is a little bit sharp. So take a little bit of sandpaper and just ch -ch 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 -ch, and then that one will be completely smooth. Whereas the one that I printed for myself is already pretty smooth to the touch. So dialing in those supports was a pretty good idea, but they still both came out looking really, really nice. So, you know, the quality of these guys. I am very happy with, and I think that you'll be happy with them too if you got these and you're gonna prime them and paint them up. Here's another example of this guy here with these like dumbbell looking things and side by side, they are virtually identical. So yeah, I'm satisfied with how these minis came out. I think they look great. Um, there's nothing on them that is broken. The only thing that I've noticed is that on this guy here, well, no, not him, it was this guy here. His blade is a little bit bent, but uh, maybe I can bend that back in shape by my hand. It's got some flexibility to it. How much is all of this going to cost? Surprisingly, not that much at all. I think it's a pretty good deal, but I wanna give you a breakdown, realistic breakdown of what nine of these models cost directly from the website, so check it out. I'm here at JLC3DP's website and I'm going to give you a little cost breakdown of how much it costs for nine of the miniatures that I'm showing off here today to be printed and shipped to me. So we can start off with this one eye rogue. He is one of the 75 millimeter miniatures and we're using SLA, that's resin. And the resin that I chose is this 9600 resin. And this one has a little description, it's matte white, it has a, uh, it's heat proof up to 59 degrees Celsius. It's got good strength, high toughness, it's durable, all that good stuff. And then the price for this particular model is 81 cents if you choose to use this 9600 resin. They got other resins here as well. They've got this black resin, Imagine Black, 8228 resin. They all have different colors and tints depending on which one that you are interested in. But the cheapest one by far is the X resin because the X resin is a blind box. So you won't know what you're going to get. But if you choose that option, it's going to lower the price. And depending on what you're getting, it could be some pretty decent savings. So we went from 81 cents down to 54 cents if we just don't care what resin that they use. But then another thing that you lose out on is you don't get the option to have them sand it for you. So when you see surface finish down here, it says no. But if you choose the 9600 option, you can choose whether whether or not you want the surface finish and whether you want sanding. So sanding is there. You can also do spray painting if you want in a certain color. Here's ultramarine. So that's going to raise the price, but you do have that option if you want to get an extra finish on your uh, models when you are done. So when you run through all of these here and look at these different prices, 118, 189, that one's 30 cents is the cheapest that they go is 30 cents. That's for the smallest of the miniature. 458 for the Toad Folk Sentinel is one of the bigger models here. And then when everything is added up, this comes out to $12.46 for these nine miniatures, which is not bad at all. But most of the money is going to be coming from shipping. So if you choose to have one of the cheapest shipping options that I found here, $14 for eight to 13 business days delivery or for more money, you can do FedEx Express for two to four days, and the price is just going to uh, change depending on what you are having printed. So I think for something like this, it's best if you just have a bunch of these miniatures printed out. And if you get a bunch of them printed, then it'll be able to uh, make you feel better about spending more money on shipping than the actual model itself. So while the shipping price can be high depending on what you're trying to get, 
what you are getting in return are miniatures that you personally choose and you pick yourself from a assortment of STLs on the internet. You don't have to worry about supports. They'll take care of all that for you. They'll go ahead and they'll sand it for you and look at the price. The price is already pretty cheap. So that's something that you won't have to worry about when it comes to like the support marks and stuff for the most part. So that's just a realistic breakdown of how much it's going to cost if you choose to go this route for your miniature printing needs. Anyway, I, I just really just wanted to share this alternative option for you if you wanted to get things that are uh, resin 3D printed. And I know you can go like on Etsy and whatnot, but you have to get what the seller is selling. And this is a way for you to be able to get STL files on your own, either things that are free, or maybe you can support someone's Patreon and you can get their cool miniatures and then you can have those printed out without having to worry about going through it yourself and doing everything associated with resin 3D printing. So I'll leave a link in the description where you can uh, check out JLC 3DP if you want, do some price comparisons if you like as well, and then see if it's gonna be the uh, right choice for you. But as far as the quality goes, as you can see here, they do a pretty good job. So thank you all so much for watching. Till next time, take care of yourselves and I'll speak to you soon.